Not too long ago, a subscriber named Dennis reached out to me to redesign this 370 square foot studio apartment for his brother, who sadly, after losing their dad, decided to move to Paris in order to live closer to their mum. It's unfortunate that cities like Paris are incredibly expensive to live in, especially for people whose situations leave them very little choice, with studio apartments like this one easily selling for anywhere between 200 and 300,000 euros, where every single square inch of floor space is factored into this cost. So if you have any hope of having a comfortable place in which to live, apartments like this need a design that works hard to provide all of the functionality of a larger home in a place that's a fraction of the size. And seeing as it's been a while since doing one of these redesigns, I figured it's about time to take things up a notch to show you just how much can be squeezed out of an apartment that's this small. Now, although I'd love to head out to Paris in order to get a feel for this apartment's potential, this realistically isn't something that I can do right now. So the crucial first step is to carefully browse and understand the images that Dennis sent over to see what I can discover. Firstly, Dennis tells me that this apartment is southeast facing, which means that it benefits from some incredible morning light and also far cooler evenings during the summer. And from the photos, the first thing that stands out to me is that this apartment appears to be in pretty good nick. The two main features that I'm noticing immediately are firstly this beautiful hardwood parquet floor in both the living area and the entryway, which is not cheap and definitely something worth keeping. And secondly, there's this pair of tilt and turn French opening doors, which looks to be placed alongside a massive floor to ceiling window. Oh, and here's a fun fact. Did you actually know that we call French doors French because they actually originated in France during the Renaissance period? This probably seems really obvious to most people, but I actually didn't know this until a while ago, so I thought that that was something interesting to highlight. But anyways, I digress. Let's get back to these images. Now, what's interesting about this balcony is that despite it spanning the entire length of the apartment, it is quite narrow, which makes outdoor spaces like this really hard to enjoy as they're not really quite wide enough to comfortably fit most outdoor furniture, as it doesn't really leave much room to circulate around them. Now, unlike balconies like ours, this balcony benefits from a really nice tiled finish, which I actually really appreciate as it's a surface that's easy to mop which makes it comfortable to use this space as an extension of the living area, as you can essentially head outside barefoot during the summer without really having to worry about traipsing dirt in and out of the house. At this threshold, it looks like instead of blinds, they've hidden a curtain rail beneath the bulkhead that runs along the length of the apartment that most likely hides all of the ductwork for the apartment's ventilation system. Then as you move to the entryway, it looks like there are two storage cupboards for hanging coats or hiding large items like a stroller. And then in between these doors to the kitchen and the bathroom, it seems that this is where the apartment's soil and services stack is located, which provides vertical water supply and waste management to all of the apartments in this block, which is definitely going to be the biggest constraint as to what we can do with this apartment's layout. Then over in the kitchen, this does actually have a somewhat efficient layout by spanning it across a single wall, which avoids some of the wasted space that you usually end up with when you have corner cabinets. And along this run, it looks like it has a gas stove, which means that there is a gas supply to this apartment, and what looks to be a space for a dishwasher as it's next to the sink. Meaning that if you have a standalone fridge freezer, this is something that you're going to have to place somewhere else in this room. Now, this is a challenge as it seems like it's trying to provide enough space in this room for a dining area too, which kind of makes this room a little bit depressing as realistically, thanks to this kitchen's width, it can't really accommodate more than two people at once for eating without encroaching on the circulation space for the worktop, which makes it not very effective for entertaining guests. And then when you head across to the bathroom, it's located right between this kitchen and the living area, effectively dividing these two spaces with a very generous shower right next to the window. And it looks like it's finished in a pretty generic cheap white tile where the toilet is located in the closest proximity to the apartment's services stack, which I mentioned previously, which keeps the drainage run for waste to a minimum. And this is probably the biggest constraint if we're gonna make any changes to this apartment's layout. 
Now, there's a certain amount that we can learn from these images, but it's when you take a look at the plan that it starts to showcase some of this apartment's real inefficiencies. Despite this bathroom being refurbished not that long ago, it takes up such a large amount of the total floor area, with a room that only accounts for a fraction of this apartment's use, which makes it quite an inefficient use of space. And then by the kitchen and the dining area being separated from the main living space by this room, it segregates the heart of the home from the most enjoyable space in the apartment, which is the area that enjoys the most natural light through these French doors which lead you out to the balcony, which to me is the space where you're most likely to want to enjoy your meals. Now, with a studio apartment like this, what people tend to do is just fill it with typical everyday furniture, probably because they found it for a good deal online or because they simply like the look of it, which is completely understandable. So what someone might do is place a typical double bed up against the wall furthest from the window as sleep doesn't really benefit from the natural light and then this leaves enough space next to it for a sofa and perhaps a workspace and TV next to these French doors which would then facilitate Dennis's brother's work from home needs as he does this from a laptop for around 50% of the week thanks to his job in IT. But with a layout like this, I can see that you're typically going to end up reluctantly eating meals out of that cramped and dingy kitchen, or simply on your lap in front of the TV. And because the bed is now on show and there aren't really all that many places to sit, you can't really use this space to comfortably entertain guests, which I think is a real shame as it seems that a large incentive for this whole move in the first place was to live closer together as a family in order to care for one another. But thankfully, there is quite a lot we can do to fix this. Now, if I was doing this on a budget, one way around this might be to include a coffee cum dining table of some sort, a bit like the one that I owned in my London flat. And what this would do is allow dining to happen in this main space for more than two people at once when paired with folding chairs. And what this will do is free up the kitchen to utilize this unused space for more countertop or storage, which could even include a breakfast bar. And what this would do is still keep the kitchen somewhat social by providing some seating, while also utilizing the space in the living area for dining. Alternatively, instead of opting for a transforming dining table, you might opt for a wall or daybed instead. And what this would do is allow space for a proper dining table that doesn't have to be moved around several times a day. Where you may have noticed that wall beds are actually becoming a quite typical solution for most studio apartment developments, as it makes the apartment feel quite generous and opens up the space for things like exercise, projects, or entertaining. Because essentially, it makes the largest furniture item in your home completely vanish. But the fact of the matter is, with all or any combination of these budget options, it's hard to get around the fact that so much of the natural light coming from the windows is going to waste in a closed off bathroom that gets barely any use. And regardless of what you do with the kitchen and the dining area, there's no denying that both of them are just too small to do either of their jobs particularly well. And I don't know about you, but despite this keeping things to a budget, it just leaves me a little bit uninspired, as actually none of this touches any of the apartment's architecture. Now, this is where I begin to run into a little bit of a dilemma about what I'm actually trying to do with this channel, as on the one hand, people who tend to own studio apartments and small spaces like this one don't really have the budget to start moving walls around. And if you're a renter, this is completely off the cards, which is really frustrating as these are the people who tend to need this help the most. However, when it comes to this apartment, Dennis's brother actually owns this place. And in his application, Dennis mentions that his brother wants this place completely future-proofed because the cost of real estate in Paris is so high. So if this really is the case with this apartment and there's a willingness to completely tear it apart and coordinate with all of the various consultants and trades that are required to pull off a project like this, it can actually be argued that it makes a lot of sense to completely remodel an apartment like this one. If a full remodel is on the cards, there would be a lot to gain from rotating this layout 
so that the kitchen occupies the space by the windows while establishing a clear connection to the main living space. What this simple move does is maximize the natural light entering the space by sharing it with the places that need it, which also makes this apartment feel far bigger as now its length can be experienced and enjoyed in its entirety, where a fold-out wall bed and sofa could be placed along the wall, along with a fold-out gate leg dining table and TV opposite, which could even double as a computer monitor. And as a bathroom is a private space that doesn't really benefit much from windows when it's well mechanically ventilated, this room could maintain its proximity to the apartment's existing soil stack while taking up a far smaller and more reasonable footprint, which would even leave enough room for a walk-in closet off the hallway that could even accommodate a small nursery or den to completely future-proof this apartment. When modeled in CAD, you can see just how much bigger the apartment feels when sitting from the sofa. And when moving to the kitchen, you can see it's completely flooded with natural light. And because of its increased length, it provides enough space to fit in an oven, hob, dishwasher and sink, as well as an integrated fridge freezer and space for a laundry cabinet at the far end, where a characterful arch could be installed to hide the bathroom ventilation duct and help to create a threshold between these two spaces and their differing floor finishes. With a sofa and wall bed occupying the living space in the form of a storage wall, this creates the perfect spot for a TV on the wall opposite, where a TV like the Samsung frame could hang to display some of their grandfather's artwork while also doubling as a computer monitor for Dennis's brother to work from, where in order to create a feature out of this, the kitchen joinery could wrap around the corner and create a fold-out desk and dining table to work from. But what I like most about this layout is that it does this while maintaining the position of most of the internal walls, which could really help in reducing construction costs as the existing floor finishes in what would be the bathroom and closet can simply be retained. But unfortunately, despite spending hours designing this in CAD, something still just doesn't feel right. Now, obviously there are so many variables when it comes to the value of real estate, and in no way am I qualified to give you financial advice. But in some circumstances, by spending money on a home, it can significantly increase its value and make it a more enjoyable place in which to live, where this actually becomes a rare circumstance where you actually wind up making money in the long run by spending it. This is where people get the incentive to flip houses. But if I'm honest with myself, despite this layout being a lot brighter and establishing this new relationship between the kitchen and the living area, this new kitchen layout isn't really any more efficient than the previous one, as there's just so much dead-end circulation space. So it just seems really hard to justify the cost of remodeling with these changes alone. On top of this, when I was really considering how I would feel living in this apartment, despite it seeming great when everything's put away, there's just simply so much friction created by that folding wall bed and desk. And seeing as I'm always interacting with a surface of some kind, I could just see that desk being left out almost permanently, which creates a pretty terrible circulation route between the kitchen and the entryway. And on top of the fact that the wall bed and desk have to be folded out or put away every single time that you want to use them, I have to figure something out. Essentially, what I think I need to do in order to make a remodel of this apartment worthwhile is include a bedroom, a dining area, and a workspace, which in a typical one bedroom apartment would probably bring the floor area up by around 10 square meters, and of course, significantly increase its retail value. But as I don't have 10 square meters to play with, by swapping the location of the existing kitchen with the bathroom instead of rotating it, and by removing the partition to the living room, this completely eliminates this dead-end circulation space by sharing it with the living area. Then as this really makes the bathroom far too big for an apartment of this size, it could be compressed to allow space for a queen-sized bed to occupy this space by the windows. Where to make all of this work, by moving the kitchen across towards the living space and shrinking its length, 
It provides space for access to the foot of the bed, as well as creating space for a laundry closet and a separate cloakroom toilet, allowing the shower and the toilet to be used simultaneously should more than one person live in this apartment at once. And if you can get this to work, it would essentially give this small studio space the functionality of a well-equipped one-bedroom apartment. After a lot of tweaking, I think I've finally come up with possibly the best layout you can possibly fit inside of this apartment. As you come through the front door, the existing closet space has been retained, but modified to include mirrored sliding doors to help this dark space feel a little bit larger, where a small shoe cabinet acts as an entryway console for keys and a place to display some of their grandfather's artwork on the way through to the main space. The main feature of this layout is undoubtedly the kitchen, which is finished with white finger pool cabinets and a pale terrazzo countertop to both maximize the light in the space and not compete with the characterful parquet floor. Although compact, it includes a counter depth fridge freezer, sink, full size dishwasher, and hob, with a drainage rack and extractor fan integrated into the cabinets above, where an island houses an integrated microwave as well as drawers for things like cutlery, kitchenware, and utensils. By sharing the kitchen's circulation space with the living area, it provides enough space for a bedroom nook that fits a queen-size bed with storage underneath and cabinets above, along with a laundry closet that accommodates a washer-dryer with hanging space, which is both plumbed and ventilated by sharing its services with the neighboring kitchen and bathroom. The main driving force behind this layout is that it allows the main space to be completely flexible to change in order to accommodate various types of future users, where in this configuration, it incorporates an extendable dining table for up to eight people, as well as a comfortable sofa. Hidden within an extension of the kitchen island is a 43-inch TV on a motorized stand at desk height, which allows a work surface to fold out in order to use this TV as part of a desk setup, where 4K TVs of this size have been tried and tested to provide the same pixel density as four tiled 1080p monitors. By locating the bedroom next to the living space, the increased natural light and length of the apartment can also be experienced in its entirety, along with a far improved connection to the balcony which utilizes IKEA storage benches to provide outdoor seating and planting along its narrow length, which provides some greenery and privacy to the rooms inside, along with overflow storage in addition to the storage locker that's down in the building's basement. Then in the toilet and shower rooms, for the most part, they've been able to retain the existing floor finish in order to reduce cost, where the walls and joinery have been treated with micro cement that provides a durable, waterproof, and minimal finish, where small recesses have been made into the new stud partitions for the cloakroom sink and for shelving in the shower in order to maximize space. And by choosing to have a floating vanity unit and toilet in these small spaces, it allows you to see the extents of the floor area, which also helps in creating this illusion of space, where in the design of this apartment, not a single inch of space has gone to waste by keeping circulation space to a minimum without having to compromise on how the separate spaces in this apartment are distinguished, which radically improves this apartment's flexibility and functionality, which theoretically should cause an increase in desirability and resale value too. And before I go, I just wanna say that this whole idea of functional minimalism actually extends far beyond the home where the products that we use every day can hold us back a lot more than we think. Now, I didn't really realize this until several years ago, but for instance, something like a sling bag, when designed well, can be far more comfortable and secure than a bag like a backpack, as most of the time, and especially during the summer months, I simply don't want the additional size and weight that comes with a backpack if I'm only carrying something like a tablet, a water bottle, 
or a camera. And bags like this are only made more appealing with clever details such as magnetic clips for easy removal or gusseted sides which ensure that they're no thicker than what they're carrying inside. Bellroy, who I'm incredibly grateful to have as sponsors of today's video, are a certified B Corp and share this passion for functional, unfussy, clean design more than almost any other company that I know, designing products for almost every use case that look just as good as they perform. So if you love clean and effective design just as much as I do, be sure to check them out using the link down in the video description, where you can also get an additional 10% off using my link too.